look at Alaska and you look at the landscape and you see lots of mountains and lots of rocks and lots of ice, and you don't really think of it as being a fecund or a, a food producing type place, but in fact the, the Gulf of Alaska is so rich that we export a tremendous amount of protein to the rest of the country and to the world. The Pollock fishery in the Bering Sea in the Gulf of Alaska, one of the largest fisheries in the world, uh, definitely the, the largest fishery we see here over here in North America. And if you think about it, it's, it's a wild sustainable food. Supplying the world with a protein source that we haven't had to supplement at all, that we haven't had to sacrifice any land for, that we haven't had to grow any food for. The Gulf of Alaska supports some really productive fisheries and we know from sad history that it is important to manage fisheries in such a way that they remain productive and they do not get overfished. And to do that you have to understand how many fish there are going to be. And so the, the overall goal of this project is to try to understand why we have such huge year-to-year -year variations in the survival of the first year, the very youngest of some commercially important fish species. When we manage fish stocks and we make management decisions, those decisions are all based on the adult population because that's the part that we have a lot of fishery statistics for. But what we have to kind of guess at is how that population is supplemented with new fish every year. So that process of new fish entering into the population, new fish that used to be juveniles that have now matured into adults, that's called recruitment. So the approach that we have taken in the past is to estimate how many eggs are produced by the population in, at, during the spawning event, and then to apply some number and say, oh, well, a quarter of a percent of those are going to survive, and that's how many we'll see enter the population in two or three years. But that's a long time, and there's a lot that can happen in that time interval. So if we understand the process by which those eggs become larvae and then become little baby fish and then make it through their first winter, then we can, we can better understand that process and we can start to develop models that are much better at predicting the recruitment into the populations. The Gulf of Alaska project is an integrated ecosystem study of the Gulf of Alaska. And the idea is to link physical factors like currents and winds to oceanographic conditions like salinity and temperature and water fronts and link those then to the distribution and abundance and condition of juvenile fishes so that we can understand how the ecosystem functions to produce fish that then we like to eat. We're not just looking at that individual fish, we're going to look at everything that goes on into that entire ecosystem. Who's eating that fish, what the fish is eating, who's eating the same thing the fish is eating, and what type of marine environment are they in? Are they in a real hot year? Is it a cold year? Is there seem to be a lot of nutrients available? It's a lot of different kinds of science and a lot of different kinds of scientists with different backgrounds and different ways of looking at things, trying to come together to understand an ecosystem. And we go from the physics of how the water is moving around in the system all the way up through fish that are pretty high on the food chain. And then we also try to model all of that. The modeling component is really going to be the glue that brings all this information and, and, and sticks it together and helps us understand more holistically uh, the important connections and links across the different trophic levels. And it's also a way for us to integrate the measurements that we make out in the ocean in order to predict and um, forecast and make test hypotheses really to try to understand what are the most important factors in the Gulf of Alaska.
people like to eat fish, Alaskans like to eat fish, and we want our kids to eat fish, and we want their kids to eat fish. So we want to provide this protein on a sustainable basis. And it's an evolving process how we're doing that. We're constantly evolving and improving the tools that we use to do that. And now we're trying to evolve into this more ecosystem, more holistic approach so that we can account for the components of the system that haven't previously been accounted for. There's seven billion people on the planet. We're impacting every single nook and cranny of this planet. And I think it behooves us to have an understanding of the other non-human parts of this planet and how they work. Um, if we're gonna run around and do all the things that we do, let's take a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of that energy and resource and put it into understanding the processes that give rise to these amazing organisms and these amazing ecosystems.